Hello, Victory Family Church here in Cranberry. They're in Newcastle. Join us online. My name is Sean Moore. I'm the director of Waymaker. That's our school of ministry here. At Woo! Yeah, Waymaker. Uh, joining us here today. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Thank you. I just completely lost my train of thought, but thank you. Waymaker, shout out. It's an awesome thing. But hey, thank you so much again for joining us uh, here today. Man, it's going to be a good time. And uh, we are actually... Uh, in a second week of a three-part series that we are calling A House of Prayer. It's all about prayer. You know, God desires that His people be a people marked by prayer. You know, there's things that God wants to see happen. It's in His heart. It is His will. But it's only going to happen when God's people pray. We pray because it brings spiritual things into this physical reality. It's God's will in heaven. He wants us to pray it into the earth. That's why we pray, and that is why we are talking about this. So where we're going to begin today, if you have a Bible, whether it's physical, digital, and of course we always put it up on the screen for you as well, we're going to read Romans chapter 8 verses 26 and 27 as we begin. Romans chapter 8 verses 26 and 27, and then we're going to pray. Romans 8, 26 says this, And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. What is our weakness? For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us, He intercedes for us, with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us, believers, as believers, He pleads for us in harmony, perfect alignment with God's own will. Perfect harmony. And that's why if you're taking notes today, I encourage you to do that as an act of just laying hold of the things that God wants to download into your heart today. If you want to title your notes, you can title it this, The Perfect Prayer. The Perfect Prayer prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much today for your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are the teacher. I can't help anybody, but you can help anybody. And so we open up our hearts to you today in expectation and faith. I ask that you would open up the eyes of our hearts, our understanding to hear and to see, to know the things that you want to impart into us, not just knowledge, not just information, things that we can just know and say, well, wasn't that inspiring? Wasn't that nice? Or to check the box that we went to church, we are expecting, not just showing up passively, we're expecting actively to hear from you and to receive some things from you that we're going to live out outside of these walls, not just to go to church, but to be the church, not to talk about prayer, but to actually be a people of prayer. And so we thank you for your great grace that enables us to do all of this. And we set our hearts upon you today in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, I got a confession to make as we start today. Um, I am what you might call directionally challenged. I'm a directionally challenged driver. Anybody else today online, Newcastle? Yeah, yeah, that, that's me. When I first started to, to drive, I discovered very quickly I hadn't been paying attention at, at all when I was merely a passenger, being driven around everywhere by my parents. I didn't know. I knew Walmart existed. I just couldn't get there. I had been there before. I knew it was over there, but I never... <laughs> Uh, I don't know how to get there. It's just, it's just weird. When you have to drive, it just became completely a different experience altogether. And so that's why I'm so thankful that I married my wife, Sarah, who is not directionally challenged, man. She's got it all down. And in fact, she loves the challenge of figuring out how to get to a place that she's never been before, right? It's like she can just has it all mapped out, and I know this road is here, and this road is there. So then, therefore, I can just go there. I'm just like, how do you know that? Like, I just know tree road. Like, that's, that's all I really can, can remember attached to this, right? And, and, and so it's especially true when we are driving in Pittsburgh, in the city, downtown, as they say, downtown, all right? Now, if you've never been driving in, in Pittsburgh, God bless you, all right? Because if you have, you know it's just spaghetti. The roads are spaghetti. There was no, someone was like, oh, that's a road there, stick a road there, bridge there, there's water, we got a bridge over, and there's just stuff everywhere, it makes no sense. Cross here real fast, they got to cross here, they're going to cut you off, we're going to make sure you have to cut each other off to go where you want to go, all right? That's the way they drew it up. And so in the city, Sarah lived in the city uh, for a period of time in an area, so she has a much higher comfort level, and she's basically just constantly telling me where to go. And at times, she's like, just let me drive. All right, I'm just going to go over there, grab the wheel. Sarah, it doesn't work that way. I'm already, I'm already driving. But 
So we have to work together. It can be a bit contentious, especially when I bust out the GPS. You would have thought I just brought another woman into the car. <laughs> like, I just... Like, oh, really? <laughs> GPS? God already gave you a GPS. He gave you a GPS right here. Don't insult me with that. I will find a way. I'm going to figure out how we're going to get where we're trying to. I've never been there before, but I know the way. I got it all mapped out, and she does oftentimes. I need, I need the help. I'll put it away, honey. Okay, it's, it's all right. And, and, but, but there's times where, where it's a place, a destination where I, I don't know where we're going, how to get there. And also, she doesn't know where we're going, how to get there. And so thank God in those times for GPS, man, I could, I could just live off of the GPS. And one of my favorite things about it is when you use the GPS on your phone is that it can see the road ahead and the traffic patterns up ahead and will recalculate your route to maybe avoid some of that and get there faster. I love that about the GPS. And all of this makes me think about the verse we just read, the passage we just read about the Holy Spirit helping us in the midst of our weakness. See, here's what I know, is that there are some areas within prayer where I have some understanding. Maybe you're at my level of understanding when it comes to driving a little bit more limited as far as what the Bible might say specifically. We do have this universal direction about things for us to pray for, and we talked about this last week. I encourage you to get caught up on that if you didn't already catch that message, but we talked about praying in agreement with God's word. It's universal. We have that clarity. I have some understanding. I know about that. I can pray that out, right? And regardless of your level, whether again, my level of understanding or Sarah's level of understanding, right? So wherever you are, there's some of that where I have clarity about what to pray for. The Bible gives me direction. But as we just read, there are areas where my understanding has limits, where I don't know how best, as we read, we don't always know exactly what God wants to pray for, how best to pray about it. Like, I know the Bible says that he has a future and a plan for my life, but how do I pray about that? Like, God, show me what that plan is, and I pray that it that it goes well and that it happens. Like, how do I pray about that? Or I know that my friend is going through something right now. I can see it in their face. Maybe they haven't even told me the details. I know I need to be praying about that, but I don't know how to pray about that as I ought to. I know my child is going through some challenges right now. They don't want to talk to me about that, but I know I need to be praying about it. And I don't know how to pray about that as I ought to pray about that. Or how about this one? I see a lot of issues going on in the world. I see a lot of issues going on in my nation, 20 bazillion of them. And I don't even know the facts. I don't even know what's true. How should I even be praying about this? But I know something's got to happen. I got to be praying something right now. But God, I don't know what to pray for as I ought to pray for it. My, my understanding has its limits. But thank God, God thought of that. And he provided a way for you and for me, this empowerment of the Holy Spirit that enables me to pray beyond my limits, beyond my weaknesses, and areas where I don't know what to pray for, how to pray for. He provided the way for you and for me to pray the perfect prayer. Come on, baby. There's an empowerment of the Holy Spirit. He helps us to pray two ways, as we read there. Number one, he helps us to pray beyond what we know to pray beyond what we know, and secondly, more accurately than we know. Beyond what we know, and more accurately than we know. Beyond what we know, where do we get that? We don't know what God wants us to pray for. Verse 26 of Romans 8. I don't even know I need to pray for it. There's a category of things, I don't even know I need to pray about that. But it's not just beyond what I know, it's also more accurately than we know. That's a category where I know I need to pray about it, but I don't know specifically how best to pray about it. That's where verse 27 says, the Spirit pleads for us believers in perfect harmony with God's own will. It's the perfect prayer when we're praying in harmony with the Holy Spirit by this help that we have. God made a way for us, for you and for me, to ask what we would ask if we had all the facts. God had made a way, an empowerment, a prayer, the perfect prayer, whereby we can ask what we would ask if we had all the facts. If I had God's perfect knowledge 
of the situation. That's available to you today. No matter where you are, Cranberry, Newcastle, online, that's for you. That's what we're talking about today. What is that perfect prayer? It is praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit. Another term is praying in tongues. Praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues. Two passages that bear this out. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 14 and 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 14 and 15. It says this, If I pray in a tongue, what is a tongue? Praying inside of a tongue, that just sounds weird. What are we talking about right now? Praying in a tongue, that's speaking in a language I do not understand. When I pray in a tongue, a language I do not understand, my spirit prays. But my mind, my understanding, is unfruitful. Why? I'm not praying a language that I understand. That comes and is filtered through my mind when I'm praying in an unknown tongue, an unknown language. It's my spirit that's doing the praying, not my mind. Therefore, my mind is unfruitful. It's not involved in the process. We got it? Verse 15, what am I to do? I will pray with my spirit in a language I don't understand. But I will pray with my mind also in a language that I do understand. You understand, even though we're talking about a perfect prayer, it's a both and. We don't just default to only praying in tongues, only praying in our own understanding. Sometimes, as those of you that are functioning in this, you understand about praying in the Spirit, praying in other tongues. Sometimes you know this. We just default to praying in the Spirit. And here's the real reason why. Because we don't want anybody to know what we're praying about. Come on, baby. I'm just going to pray this out right now. If they heard what I'm really praying about, let's keep it. Just pray it on their spirit. They don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. It's all good. All right? <laughs> there we go. But what, no, Paul says here in 1 Corinthians, no, I'm going to do both. I'm going to pray in my, with my spirit and my mind also. I'll sing praise with my spirit. I will sing with my mind also. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Ephesians 6, 18 says this. Pray in the spirit at all times times and on every occasion stay alert be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere praying in the spirit praying in this unknown language now i understand as we talk about praying in the spirit praying in tongues i mean you just dropped a bomb for a lot of people like what in the world are you talking about weird alert is going off warning warning head for the exits some of you, if you've been taught, it's not even just that it's weird, and, and, and I'll just acknowledge right at the top, there is oftentimes some weird that can be attached to what we're talking about today. People make stuff weird. God's not weird, but people can be weird. Come on, I mean, just, just look around. Just, just look at somebody, and if you don't see anybody weird, then... <laughs> but but it's, it, well, we're glad that you're here. God loves you. All right, so, um, but you know, there's, there can be some weird attached to this, right? There can be some weird... Let's acknowledge the weird, but let's not let the weird cause us to reject the genuine. But as other of us, it's not even just about the weird. It's that we've been taught, well, that's passed away. That that, that's just not. Some of you have been taught that it's just of the devil. That it's quite frankly, maybe it's just unnecessary. It's just kind of okay. Maybe if that gift is for you, but just not really for me, and I'll just be okay without it. It's just not for me. Maybe for that weird person that I know, but it's not for me. Right? And I'm just going to acknowledge right now, I'm not going to be able to answer every question or every objection or roadblock that you might have. I'm not going to be able to do it. So I'm going to say this right at the top. I want to point you to a resource. If you have very specific questions about what we're talking about today, some questions don't get answered for you, here's a real simple resource that you can check out. All right? It's a book called The Holy Spirit an introduction by John Bevere. The Holy Spirit, an introduction. It's written by John Bevere, who's going to be speaking here in just a few weeks. Just FYI, on a weekend. Be awesome. Check out that resource to you. You can also find a series that Pastor John Nuzo, our lead pastor, did called The Other Baptism. It's a whole series dedicated to some of these things that we're talking about today. The Other Baptism that will also be a help to you. But I also know this, that you and I do not need perfect understanding of all of these things for us to receive it and to enjoy it. Come on, somebody. You didn't have to wait till you understood everything about salvation to receive salvation. I'm still learning stuff about that. I'm still learning stuff about what we're talking about today. But all the while, I'm going to enjoy it. All the while, I've received it. All the while, I'm going to live in it and experience in it. If God has it for me, then I believe it. I receive it. So how do we receive this ability to pray out 
this perfect prayer. Praying in the Spirit, praying in other tongues. The name for this is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You may have heard it, this, the immersion of the Holy Spirit, the filling of the Holy Spirit. These are synonymous terms for this experience. And we see that as the catalyst for us then moving into praying in other tongues, praying in the Spirit. All right, and I will give you a very brief crash course in this baptism of the Holy Spirit because it is a separate experience from receiving Jesus as your Savior and as your Lord. In John chapter 20, Jesus, to his disciples, breathed, breathed on his disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. In that moment, they received the Spirit of God on the inside of them. You and I do not need to receive the breath of Jesus literally on this earth. We just receive him as our Savior and our Lord as the payment for our sins. When we do that, the, the Scripture says that now the Holy Spirit lives in us. He makes our spirit brand new in him. We're born of the Spirit. The Spirit of God is in me. But we see Jesus later saying to his disciples, listen, wait for the promised Holy Spirit. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Somebody say, upon you. Upon. Try it again, upon you. Upon. So over here is the Spirit of God within me. I received him as my Savior and Lord. Now we're talking about the Spirit of God upon me. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon me and you will be empowered to be a witness. Whenever that occurred, they began to speak in other tongues. This is Acts chapter 2. They began to speak in other tongues, other languages as the Holy Spirit empowered them to do so. It's evidence, an initial evidence, not the only, but the initial evidence of this baptism with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God upon you. And so just to prove out this connection between the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in other tongues, I'll give you this real quick. Five times in the book of Acts, five times we see the baptism of the Holy Spirit occur. These outpourings, if we will, of the Holy Spirit upon. Five occurrences. In those five, three out of the five, it explicitly states they spoke in other tongues. All right? So it's explicit. The other two, you can infer it. Sean, what do you mean by inferring that they spoke in tongues? I'll give you one example. The apostle Paul, he had hands laid upon him. By a man named Ananias, he said, receive the Holy Spirit. It does not say that Paul spoke in tongues at that time. But we read from 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul, his own writings, his own testimony, if you will, saying, I thank my God I speak in tongues more than all of you. And he was talking to a crazy tongue-talking church that was using tongues in all kinds of crazy ways over top of each other. It was chaos. They spoke in tongues a lot. A lot. He said, I'm actually speaking in tongues more than you guys are. All right? Crazy stuff. All right? And so he spoke in other tongues. We see the connection between the two, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, praying in the Spirit. And we need the same empowerment that the, that the Holy Spirit poured out that the days of the early church had. We can't have the same results without the same empowerment that they had. It's a both and. So what happens when we actually do this? When we pray this perfect prayer, we're praying in the Spirit, praying in other tongues, what is actually going on? We're going to give us two things. There are more, but we're going to focus on two things. When I'm praying in the Spirit, this help of the Holy Spirit to pray beyond my understanding, beyond what I can know, and praying in perfect harmony with God's will, what is going on? Two things. Number one is that we pray out mysteries to God. We are praying out mysteries to God. This comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2. And it says this. For one who speaks in a tongue, a language I do not understand, you are speaking not to men, not to people, but to God. For no one understands him. Why does no one understand him? You are speaking in a heavenly language, not an earthly language. There's heavenly languages? There's heavenly languages that no one on this earth speaks. It is a heavenly language, therefore no one understands you. It's a direct to God communication. But what are you doing? No one understands him, but he is speaking, he or she, is speaking mysteries. Somebody say mysteries. Mysteries in the Spirit. When I'm praying in tongues, I, my spirit is having a direct line to God. You can say it this way. I am speaking to God at God's level. 
Wow. Why? Because the limitation of my own mind, my own understanding, my own way to formulate a sentence and express what's in me is now removed. My spirit has direct access, empowered by the Holy Spirit, to pray things out direct to God. This intimate language, it's just you and me, God, and my spirit with his spirit. God is spirit. This spirit conversation direct from God to me. The Holy Spirit helps me to pray direct and to, at God's level. And what are we praying out? We're praying out mysteries. Some translations put it as divine secrets. Divine secrets. Mysteries. And this word that's here translated as mysteries, mysterion, mysterio, I think Spider-Man, bad guy, villain there. Mysteries. It's not describing like something, some type of like murder mystery where it's like a whodunit and, it, and there are this unsolved mystery, this thing that you just can't ever understand, can't ever grasp. It's not about something unknowable. This mystery that we are praying out is something that can only be known through revelation. I'm praying out things that can only be known by revelation, meaning God reveals it. It's only known as God reveals it. Here's a picture for you to put this together. When I'm praying out in the spirit, all right? Picture Christmas morning, baby. Christmas morning, which we are just three months away. From Christmas right now, pressure is on, baby. All right? So picture Christmas morning. Got the Christmas tree up. Got all the presents. And they're all wrapped, right? So you've got your wrapped presents underneath the Christmas tree. Right? And so picture we've got, we've got wrapped up over here. We've got wisdom and we've got some wise counsel and direction. We've got healing and we've got purpose and plan of God for your life. You've got all these things and it's wrapped under the tree. And when you and I pray in the spirit, praying in a tongue, a language I do not understand, this heavenly language from my spirit, direct to God's spirit, here's what's going on. I am unwrapping this and now I've got it. And I'm unwrapping. I've got counsel now. I've got wisdom now. I've got healing now and I'm unwrapping the mystery is being revealed into my present is being revealed into my future and I have now got it I'm praying out the mysteries in God's heart I'm praying out the perfect plan and purpose of God I'm unwrapping it and now it's something not just in the heart of God it's now waiting for me in my future come on I don't think you realize what in the world you just heard. I don't think you realize that you just prayed out something into your future that would not have been there, but God wanted you to have it. He had it wrapped up for you, and you don't have it. Listen, there are things right now you don't have because you're not doing this. Well, God, why don't I have that? He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you to pray and to pray out things that you don't even know you should be praying about. That's why this capacity is so crazy. To pray beyond my mind, to pray beyond, beyond the things that I even see in the Word of God, that He wants me to pray out that mystery, that secret, that thing He has your name on, and He's waiting for you to take it, but we won't take it until we pray it. And when we pray it in the Spirit, well, I am seeing it now, I'm unwrapping it now, it is now waiting in my future. It's an investment into the future, it's an investment into the future, not just for me, but for my family, for my friend, for my nation, for the world, and now it's just a matter of time I'm going to intersect with that provision I just prayed out in the spirit come on baby praying out divine secrets mysteries God's perfect plan for your life it's like the secret code talk almost between you and God and it reminds me of World War II right U.S. entered entered World War II when when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor and really early on in the war, the Japanese were, were dominant in the Pacific. And part of the reason why they came to discover that they were intersecting our communications, but they were also decoding those communications. And they came to find out why they were able to do that as easily as it seemed like they were able to do that is because they had a number of Japanese soldiers that had been educated in the United States and they were very familiar, they knew our language. And it gave them this, this way which they could easily translate and get through and decode our communications. And so they're able to anticipate troop movements, different plans that we had in place, set up ambushes, all kinds of crazy stuff. It gave them a significant upper hand, as you might imagine, all right? So we're, we're just getting like kicked around all over the place in the Pacific early on. But there was a turning point. 
And this is in February of 1942. A man named Philip Johnston. Philip Johnston, he's a World War I veteran. He's also the son of a missionary. And he had this idea. He had this idea for this coded communications whereby the Japanese would not be able to decode it. And it, the idea came from the fact that, again, missionary son and his dad was a missionary and they lived on this Navajo reservation to reach the Navajo people. Very, very kind of closed off reservation type of community, right? So he's there. And so, so Philip Johnson, he grew up playing with the kids there, that kind of thing. And he, he personally spoke the Navajo language. And the thing about the Navajo language is that it's a language that's only spoken on the reservation, it is estimated that less than 30 people on the planet spoke the Navajo language outside of that reservation. So extremely rare that you would ever hear this, right? But he personally spoke it, and he thought, you know what? I feel like that would be a good basis for some coded communications because it's so, so secluded, so rare, so isolated. And so he pitched this idea to use this as a coded language to a, to a general friend of his, and so they, they started to talk about it, about, okay, let's, let's test it out, let's do this. And so they sent out this call out to the Navajo people, the Navajo men, and say, hey, this is what we want to do, whoever wants to opt in, let's do it, baby, let's give it a shot. And so 29 Navajo men signed up and listed to be radio operators in the U.S. Marine Corps. And so they, they tested this out, they proved it out, they helped develop this coded communication, this coded language, and this language that only they knew. And the enemy couldn't break the code. In fact, it wasn't broken for decades, decades afterwards. And it created confusion among the, among the Japanese. They never heard this before. We never heard this kind of communication before. And because of these men, the U.S. began to experience victories in the Pacific, and in particular credited with the win at Iwo Jima. I mean, a huge turning point in the war in the Pacific. And these men were called code talkers. Another term you may have heard is wind talkers. Wind talkers. And I love wind talkers because I see a parallel there. In Acts chapter 2, Jesus told his disciples, don't go anywhere, don't do anything, don't do any ministry. I know I've given you this great commission to preach the word, heal the sick, cast out demons, but don't do any of that yet. It's like, are you serious? Yeah, don't do any of that yet. You need to be empowered. You need to be empowered. And so they waited in this upper room for this Holy Spirit to come upon them, to empower them. And they're waiting. And now they hear a sound of a mighty rushing wind. And they became wind talkers. They began to speak out in the Spirit. They got a language that the enemy could not decode. They got a direct connection in a language only them and God knew. And they could pray out mysteries. And they could start to break down the, the structures of the enemy, the attacks of the enemy to frustrate his plans and see the plan of God occur in the earth. They became wind talkers. I don't know about you, but I'm not ashamed to be a wind talker, to be a code talker, to bring about the things God wants to do. We pray out mysteries, God's perfect plan in our life. The second thing, we pray out mysteries, but secondly, we pray for others. We pray out mysteries to God and with God, but we also secondly pray we pray for others. And this we see in our key text that we read in Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27. This time in a little different translation. This is the NIV. It says this. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts, he knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. By praying in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is helping us to pray for others. I can think of multiple times for Sarah and I where we've kind of felt some, some moments in, in our heart where there's just like this uneasiness, this, uh, this kind of burden sometimes, uh, just uneasiness. Man, I feel like there's something that we that we, we got to pray for. And you know, if we were limited just to our own understanding, there's not really a whole lot you can pray in that moment. But thank God for this gift, for this empowerment, this help of the Holy Spirit to pray out beyond my own understanding. And in those moments, I remember one time in particular, I believe we were still dating at the time, and I was taking her back to her car. We had met here at the church and parked in the parking lot. So we parked over there and we're just praying in the Spirit. It's like, like Sarah, I just feel like we just got to 
pray about something. And so we just prayed in the Spirit, prayed in the Spirit, and again, just, just to help you with this practically. And when you get that, fo- follow through on that. Man, God will do that in your life. He'll prompt you to pray, and you won't even know what you're praying about oftentimes. But I encourage you to lean into that. When you feel that, man, there's just something, something. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in other tongues and pray that out. And what are we looking for? We're praying until something starts to shift in my heart. And so I start to feel, okay, like a, a rest in my heart. I start to feel a peace in my soul. Like we prayed that thing out and now it is done. Right? That's praying for others. And listen, oftentimes, I don't know of a time yet where we felt that way, where we knew specifically who or what we were praying about. But sometimes you do. I want to tell a story, and if you've been a part of Victory for any length of time, you've probably heard Pastor John tell this story, but it's a good one, and I miss Pastor John, so let's get a Pastor John story in there, all right? Which he'll be back in two weeks, by the way. We love you. We miss you, Pastor John, if you're watching. Um, but he tells this story back in 2006, where uh, he uh, was awoken, he heard, heard his wife, Miss Michelle, just had some groaning and moaning coming over from the side. He's like, what in the world is, is going on? So he starts reaching over for Miss Michelle in the bed. She's not there. Like, what? So he gets up, goes over, finds her. It's like, it's like, Michelle, are you all right over here? And she's just kind of groaning, praying in the spirit. She's like, I, I got a burden to pray. Come on, help me. Come help me pray. And so I love hearing Pastor John tell it. But he just like, he's, he's like, he's like I, I kind of started for, for a, a little bit. And then I went back to sleep, right? It's three in the morning, baby. Sleep is a good thing. And so he goes, listen, God, you woke her up. You told her to pray, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, I love it. It's just so real, right? Um, so he goes, <laughs> goes back to sleep. And then uh, Miss Michelle comes back and wakes him back up. It's like, John, you're going to have to get up. And you need to shower, get dressed. The phone's going to ring. You're going to have to go to the hospital. Something has happened. But I want you to know, I know that I've prayed this thing through. And everything is going to be all right. So again, Pastor John, all right, honey. He goes back to sleep. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's real. It's real, folks. And goes back to sleep. And uh, sure enough, about 30 minutes later, phone rings, right? And it's, uh, it's, it's Kathy Spencer and, um, who's, who's calling. They're at the hospital uh, because her husband, John, many of you, you know Kathy Spencer and, and John Spencer have been part of, of the church, staff, part of the church in general for, for a number, a number of years from the beginning, basically, right? And... Um, and recently retired, but um, Kathy's calling, like, listen, we're in the hospital, listen, John threw a number of blood clots into his lungs, I believe it was seven or eight, something like that, right, and I mean, listen, one, one is bad enough, more than one is life-threatening, so you're talking seven or eight, I mean, that's like, it's, you basically should be dead, in essence, right, so they're getting this, these negative bad reports about, about this is, you know, it's not looking real good, looking real grim, all right, so this is what they're being told. And so Pastor John gets ready, goes to the hospital, and sits down with, with John and Kathy and just says, listen, guys, I don't know what this road looking forward is going to be like, specifically what the road to recovery is going to be, but I want you to know that God woke Michelle up at 3 o'clock in the morning and prompted her to pray this thing out. And so I don't know, again, I don't know what this road is going to look like with the future, what things practically are going to take place, but I do know what the end result is going to be. I know that you're going to be all right. Everything's going to be fine. You're going to fully recover. You're going to be fully healthy and whole in Jesus' name because this thing has already been prayed out in the Spirit. And you know what? That's exactly what happened. They recovered, right? Pastor John Spencer recovered, became a pastor here, a victory staff, right? Recently retired, living it up. Baby, he's still, he's still good. He's still here with us. Right here on the front row. Can we hear it for him? Come on, baby. Man, partnering together with God in prayer, praying things out in the Spirit for others. You don't even know. Man, what an amazing adventure and an opportunity that we have in God to pray out things for others. I mean, come on, guys. Just look at the nation. We look at all the things that are going on right now. And again, it's hard to even decode exactly what's happening. How should I pray about it? But can I tell you, you've got the answer. You've got the answer. You don't have to just accept what you see. You can 
pray. And, and again, prayer is not just this kind of Christian thing that we just kind of do and it's polite and it's, it's just kind of passive. No, we're there to pray. Like pray, pray, and stuff happens. Things shift. There's a provision that takes place. There's a change in the environment that takes place. Then things begin to happen. And that's why we're having this week of prayer that starts on Monday. Starts on Monday, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. We're doing it Monday through Friday. Same bat time, same bat channel. It's going to be here in Cranberry. They're in Newcastle. We're going to stream it online through our website, right? But we're going to come together. We're going to pray in our understanding, in agreement with the Word of God, and we're going to pray in the Spirit. And we're not going to do it politely. We're not going to do it like we're just going through the motions. We're not just going to shout back and say, you know, just trying to get through it. Look, we're going to pray. We're praying like we're praying things through. Praying things out and things are going to shift. Things are going to shift in us. Things are going to shift in our families. Things are going to shift for your children. Things are going to shift in your future. Things are going to shift in the church. Things are going to shift in this nation. It's going to be changed when we pray. When we pray and we pray out the Spirit, I don't have to be limited to what I know. I don't have to be limited to this. I can pray divine secrets. Things hidden in the heart of God nobody knows about. You know, the devil doesn't know everything. He's limited. He's not all-knowing. All and when we pray out those divine secrets, man, it frustrates his plans. He doesn't know what's going on, but we're praying out the plan of God. We can not only just pray out those divine secrets, we're praying out things, not just for us, we're praying out things for others praying out things for others that they need right now. Come on, if you were in the midst of some of those situations, going through this, wouldn't you want somebody to be praying for you who doesn't even know you? They don't even know who you are. God drops on somebody's heart. That burden in their heart, that uneasiness in their heart. Pray about this. Like, pray about what? Pray in the Spirit. Things are going to change. Something's going to shift. What a gift we have to help us. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness when we don't know what to pray for. He intercedes for us. He helps us through these wordless, gro wordless groans, through a language we don't understand ourselves. And He prays with us. He prays through us. Our spirit's praying, but He helps our spirit to pray in perfect harmony, perfect agreement with the will of God. The perfect prayer. It's always effective. And I just want to encourage you today, let's get ready to pray in just a moment, I want to encourage you, maybe you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You've never received that. And you can receive that today. Whether you're here in Cranberry, Newcastle, online, you can pray with somebody. We have always here in Cranberry, across the front there in Newcastle as well, we always have a prayer team that's available for you to come up front to pray. And we believe when hands are laid upon you, you're going to receive that baptism of the Holy Spirit upon you, that empowerment upon you. And you're going to go from standard definition to 4K. You know what I mean by that? An empowerment. And the first evidence of that, initial evidence of that, is I speak with other tongues. You might say, Sean, I've been prayed for about that before, but I didn't speak in other tongues. What about that? Well, I believe in that moment that you did receive, by faith, you received that baptism, you received that empowerment. You might still be learning how to yield to that, but you've got that ability in you. You've got it. And if you want some help with that, come forward. Pray with somebody about that. But we need this. This isn't an optional, a kind of just nice add-on. It's essential. God doesn't give unnecessary gifts. We need this. Especially now and for where God wants us to go. We need it. That's why we're talking about it. Can I pray for you? Father, I just thank you so much today for your word. Thank you for speaking to us, ministering to our hearts the things that we need, Father. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping us, for praying with us. And I just pray over those that are going to come, that are going to be praying for to receive this baptism, to be filled with your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father God, that you meet them there as they step out in faith. I, we just join our faith together with, their, with theirs, that when hands are laid upon them, as they pray, they receive that baptism. They are filled and they will speak in that language, that heavenly prayer language to help them pray out that perfect prayer, giving thanks and praise to you, Father God, in that language that they don't understand, but you do. Oh, we thank you, Father God, for that to be done today. And as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed together, you know the first step before receiving this 
baptism of the Holy Spirit, this filling of the Holy Spirit, praying in other tongues, all this stuff that we've been talking about. The first step is receiving Jesus as your Savior and as your Lord. And if you don't know that you've done that, listen, I'm not talking about have you made a commitment to going to church? Hey, that's great. But if that could save us, God just would have sent a church service. And I'm not just talking about going through typical you know, church sacraments or religious observances or whatever rituals, all those kinds of things. Okay, that's all good stuff. You know, if those things could save us, God would have sent that to save us. But he sent Jesus. He sent his one and only son, all God, all man from heaven to earth to die for your sins and mine. He shed blood because without the shedding of blood, there's no removal of sin. He shed his blood upon that cross. His blood removed our sins. He rose from the dead and he offers you and me new and eternal life. It's not just about helping people have better behavior. You can get that on YouTube. You can get that from from a bunch of smart people with podcasts, but you can't get a new nature. It's not about moving from bad behavior to better behavior. It's moving from a dead nature to a living nature. That's not something you behave your way into. It's something that you receive by the grace of God. If you don't know that you have done that, this is your opportunity right now. Whether you're here in Cranberry, there in Newcastle, you're watching online with our heads bowed and our eyes closed to give you a chance to acknowledge before God, I want to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of my life, then we'll pray a prayer, a prayer out loud together with you. But first, to lay, raise your hand and to acknowledge before God, I want to make Jesus the Lord, the Savior of my life today. On the count of three, would you do that? To raise your hand. One, two, three. Lift it up for a second. Put it down. Awesome. Who else? Put it up for a second. Put it right back down. Awesome. We celebrate with you guys. We celebrate with you in Newcastle. Those of you online, this is what we're going to do. We're all going to pray this prayer out loud together with you where we can hear it. We're not just saying words as a ritualistic thing. It's not just a hocus pocus kind of thing. It's something that you mean from your heart as you say it. So repeat this after me out loud where you can hear it. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. I believe He is the Son of God. And he died on the cross for my sins. And he rose from the dead so I could have new life. So Jesus, I confess you as my Savior and my Lord. And I turn from my old ways and I turn to you. And all my sin is washed away. Heaven is my home. And I am a child of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate with those that made that decision today.